Good morning. Good morning. I am Dr. Corrine Johnson, and I just want to welcome you all to my business page this morning, um, Sparkle Global uh, Ministries. Um, I came on this morning because I want to do a teaching. Um, and for those of you that are not familiar with my services, um, I am a organizational um, strategist where um, I go into people's homes and not just clean their homes and show them how to organize their homes, but also deal with the mental state of the individual person. Because one thing that we have to understand that um, whatever we see that that's manifesting in our lives on a day to day basis it's flowing from our spirit. And so if you're living in a home and it's cluttered and it's junky and it's nasty and it's um hoard you got you're hoarding stuff and you're holding on to a bunch of stuff, it reveals uh the condition of your spirit. Uh anytime you you're living in a space or in a home and the space is junky, um, the space is not organized, the space is full of junk. That means that there's junk flowing from your spirit. That means that your mind is cluttered. That means that your spirit man um, is cluttered. And so for those of you that are not familiar with my services, um, once again, um, I, I have a business and it's called Sparkle. You're, you're on the Sparkle page right now. And I go into people's homes once again, not only to clean it, but to help them show them how to organize and to deal with their mental state as well. But I came on this morning just to give you 10 benefits of having an organized home is what I, I want to give you the 10 benefits of having an organized home this morning. Because when this um, pandemic um, was released into the earth, um, I was amazed at so many people that were so um, surprised at the reality that they were already supposed to be um, uh, sanitizing their home. Um, there were some certain people on social media that was acting like they never knew that they were supposed to be bleaching down their home. It was certain people that were acting like they never knew that they were supposed to be sanitizing their home. And so that this is a ministry that God has given me to help people um, in this area. And so this morning, I just came on real quick just to give you 10 benefits of getting um, organized. And you know that I'm a preacher. So, you know, even though I'm getting ready to give you some natural ways about how to keep your house clean and how to keep your house organized, you already know that I'm going to use scripture, uh, a scripture basis to show you where you can see in the word of God where, because a lot of times we think that when we read that scripture that says that um, the Lord is not going to dwell in unclean places, and a lot of times we think that that scripture is simply talking about the confinements of our heart. But that scripture is not just talking about the confinement of our heart. It's talking about your dwelling. It talk, it's talking about where you live as well. When there's filth, when there's dirtiness, when there's clutter, God is not going to dwell there. And if you're dwelling in a home like that, you're not going to be healthy mentally because clutter and junk and filth, it affects your mental state. It affects you emotionally. And so this morning, I just want to give you 10 benefits of getting your house organized, of getting your house organized. And, you know, the Lord is strategically um, positioning us to do so, you know, during this time that many of us are off, we're not working. These benefits are going to help you to begin to clean up your dwelling, to begin to clean up where you stay. And the scripture that I want to begin with this morning is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 40. It says, let all things be done decently and in order. And it's talking about your home. I know when we read uh, verses like that, a lot of times we think about, you know, order in the church. And yes, there needs to be order in the church. But this scripture is also talking about order in your home. Because everything that you do in your home is going to flow onto other into other areas of your life. If you live in a house and it's junky and it's nasty and you don't never clean it up, you don't never sanitize it, you don't never organize it, 
it's going to flow into other areas of your life. And what I mean is, if the house is nasty, the car going to be nasty. If the car is nasty, then it's going to flow over into your space at work. It's going to flow over into so many other areas of your life. And so this morning, 10 benefits of getting organized. And once again, the key scripture is 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 40. It says, let all things be done decently and in order. Um, the U.S. News and World Report shared an alarming statistic that the average, this is uh, the average American spends one year of their life looking for lost or misplaced items. For lost or misplaced items. Um, what could uh, most of us do with 365 days added to our lives if we're spending a whole year looking for lost or misplaced items? Um, we got to begin to seriously consider what clutter and chaos is doing to our life because it's costing you money. Clutter and chaos will begin to cost you money. Think of the progress that many of us could be making concerning um, getting uh, opening up our businesses, getting that college degree, but we're spending that time, according to the U.S. News and World Report, that the average American spends one year of their life looking for misplaced items because you're not organized, because you don't have things in place. Everything should have a place. And if everything has a place, that means when you get ready to go get it, you can go to that place and know that it is there. The average American home has 300,000 items in it. At the same time, 80% of what we have, we never use. And I want you to see how a little bit of time wasted each day by having clutter and being disorganized can add up quickly to us missing major opportunities in our life. Yes, the clutter that's in your home, the disorganization in your home, it causes you to miss major opportunities in your life. Um, Newsweek magazine discovered that we are wasting an average of 55 minutes a day, approximately 12 days a year, looking for things we own, but we cannot find it because our house is not organized. Nearly two weeks of our lives each year is dwindled away, never to be regained due to clutter and lack of being organized. We are, uh, we, we're inducted with, we, we, like, we got junk, we got paper mail, we get our mail out the mailbox, and we just let it just stack up, stack up, and it becomes junky on the desk. We don't ever clean it off. Um, each year, about 100 million households receive 16.6 billion catalogs. When the catalogs arrive, they go into a pile, mm -hmm. add to more clutter that's going to add to more chaos in your environment. And so on this morning, I came on to give you some tools to help you get organized this morning. Because once again, I was outdone at the response on social media when the people was telling you, okay, you need to use bleach, you need to sanitize your house. You mean to tell me that before coronavirus showed up, you weren't cleaning up your house? Before coronavirus showed up, you weren't sanitizing your house. You didn't know what Lysol was before coronavirus showed up. And so we got to get our mindsets this morning in a place to where we have got to get organized. And I'm not talking about where we make these New Year's resolutions that say, oh, I'm going to clean out my closet. I'm going to throw some stuff away. I'm going to give some stuff away. I'm going to clean out my cabinets. I'm going to no. God is saying that this has got to become a lifestyle for us. It's got to become a lifestyle for us. I just gave you the scripture that the Bible said that everything be done decently and in order. And it's talking about your home as well. It has to be in order. We got to begin to clean out. We got to get organized. We got to get tidy. We got to get our, our homes into shape. And I, so I'm going to share those 10 benefits of this process so you will realize that when you begin to clean up, when you begin to get organized, how it is a life changing. It's going to be life changing for you if your home is organized. My sister-in-law, it's been probably about a year and a half ago. She called me about 5.30 in the morning. She was like, 
I need to borrow one of y'all vehicles. She said, because I cannot find my keys. And I told her that morning, I said, you need to get a, one of those key rings, hang it beside your door. And when you come in the door, hang your keys there. So you'll always know where they are. They, are, they will have a place and you ain't got to get up in the morning searching through every pocketbook, looking in drawers, looking in the couch chairs, trying to figure out where you laid your keys down. If everything consistently has a place and you consistently put it back into place, it will be there when you need it. Now, the first benefit this morning to just simply cleaning up your house and getting organized is that it's going to help you to save money. When you are organized, it's going to help you to save money. Instead of buying things that you already have, you're going to be able to save money. How many times have you all ran out to the store and bought batteries and glue and soap and cleaning supplies only to find out that later on uh, you already had all of these items at the house, but because it's not organized and because it doesn't have a place, you don't know where it is. Um, the Wall Street Journal reported that simply buying duplicate or last minute supplies due to disorganization can cost a business up to 20% of the annual purchasing budget. We don't realize the money that we are wasting by running up to the store each time we can't locate the batteries. By getting things in order, you might even find the coupons. That, that you've been misplaced that's going to really help you find save some money. We got to get organized. We got to eliminate all these trips to the store, getting unnecessary items that we already have when we can be saving that money and putting it into different er, uh, other areas. And I know that we need to save money. And the reason why I know that we need to save money as Americans is because when this coronavirus hit, I saw so many people on the news saying, oh, well, we don't even know where next month's rent is going to come from. I don't know. We don't know where the next month's rent is going to come from. Well, if you were um, strategically saving money in other places where you could have been putting money back, you could have had that money during this time to pay your rent. So when we get organized, when we get our house, we can save money in other areas that can be going into a saving, a savings account instead of spending money in other areas where we don't need to because we're not organized, because our home is not clean, our, our home is not in order the way that it's supposed to be. Disorganization will drain your wallet. When you are organized and clutter-free, you won't need to rent a storage unit to house your excess belongings because you'll only keep what you need. Self-storage spaces has become a $154 billion industry with one in 11 Americans renting these units and spending an average of $1,000 a year to store their clutter. Think of what you could do with an extra $1,000 in your hand right about around now that you've been spending all year on a storage unit to house your clutter instead of cleaning it out, getting rid of it, and throwing it away. The second benefit this morning um, to getting, to getting um, organized is that you're going to actually be able to find some things in your house. You're going to be able to find some things. Um, have you lost your keys or, or your cell phone time and time and time again? On an average, um, we are spending six minutes a day looking for car keys in the morning. I read where the top five items that men look for in their homes are clean socks, the remote control, wedding album, car keys, and their driver's license. And their driver's license. Those were reported the five things that men look for. Um, how about women? Um, the top five things that women search for are shoes, a child's toy, a wallet, lipstick, and remote control. When your home is clean and organized, you're not searching for nothing. You're not going to have to search for anything because it's going to have a designated place. It's going to have a designated spot where you put everything and you'll know exactly where to look for when you need it. And you can go directly to the key hook 
for your car keys. You can go directly to the closet for your jacket. You can go directly to the filing cabinet for your insurance card. You can go directly to the laundry room for your flashlight because everything is in place. And when everything is in place, there's a sense of peace that comes to your home when you have order and everything is in place. When there is filth, when there is disorganization, when, that, when your home is not sanitized, when it is not clean, it weighs on you mentally. Not only does it weigh on you mentally, but once again, we have to understand that whatever we manifest within our homes on a day-to-day -day basis, whatever your home looks like, whatever your yard looks like, whatever your car looks like on the inside, it is a direct um, indication as to what's going on in your spirit. If your house junkie, your spirit junkie, because everything flows, the Bible says all of the issues of life flows from out of the confinements of your heart. So whatever is going on within your heart, whatever is going on in your spirit, whatever is going on even in the spirit of your mind, it flows into every single area of your life and it manifests according to whatever is going on with you. The third thing benefit this morning to um, the third benefit to getting organized this morning is that you're going to begin to save time. The average American woman spends 55.2 minutes a day looking for lost or misplaced items. As I mentioned before, that's approximately two weeks squandered a year due to disorganization. Imagine what you could do with an extra half month this year. IKEA reported a statistic showing that women with shoe racks are seven times more likely to be on time for work than women that don't have shoe racks. If your shoes always go in the closet on the rack, and I know this may sound crazy, but it's real. It's real information today. You won't be running around all over the house searching for your shoe. You got one shoe up under the couch, uh, one shoe back there under the bed. You don't know where anything is because there's disorganization. If your cell phone, your purse, your wallet, your bills, your magazines, your jackets, if everything has a designated spot, you will not be wasting valuable time hunting it down every single day. The average executive wastes six weeks annually searching for important documents that are lost in clutter. That's over a month of productivity gone. In fact, 40 research shows that 43% of Americans surveyed describe themselves as disorganized and 21% said that they have missed crucial work deadlines because of the clutter that is in their life. Nearly half said that disorganization causes them to work late at least two to three um, times a week. And so when we begin to think about the clutter that's in our life. It does not just affect our homes. It affects our cars. It affects the workplace because the clutter is going to flow over into those areas of our life. It's not just that your house is going to be junky. Your car is going to be junky. Your work spot is going to be junky. Hold just one minute. My phone is going dead. Let me get my charger. I apologize for pausing. My phone is going dead. The enemy don't want y'all to get this um, information this morning, but you're going to get it. I got my portable charger right here to put on my phone so it can begin to charge right here. Sorry for the interruption. I thought it was fully charged, but we got to begin. We got to begin to get rid of the clutter that is in our life. Um, there was a, a particular um, guy that wanted to um, rent out his home. He was, he was looking for somebody to rent out his home and there was a young lady that pulled up at this man's home and he began to tell her when she pulled up and the lady said that the guy was looking down in her car and she didn't understand why he was looking, you know, like, like not looking at her, but like looking throughout the car. 
And so when she got out of the car, the man said, um, he said, you know, it's been about seven or eight people here before you that came to rent my property. He said, but I, I didn't rent it out to them. He said, but I think you're going to be the lucky person to rent it. And so the lady um, walked through the house and everything. And she told him, you know, um, I, I love the house. I want to get the house. And the man rented the house to this lady. And the reason why um, he rented it, the lady asked him, she said, um, I heard you say that other people came before I did. Why did you not rent the house to those people? And the man started to explain to the lady that when they pulled up, you know, he was looking at some of them, you know, their car wasn't washed. And then he was peeping on the inside of the car. He said there was junk all over the place in the car. And even this, this, this guy, he understood that whatever was in the car, if it was junk in the car, he understood that it was flowing from somewhere. And that place where it was flowing from was the home because I just told you that if the house is cluttered, if the house is disorganized, if things are not in place in the house, it's going to flow over into your car. It's going to flow over into your workspace. It's going to flow over into every single area of your life. And so the man was telling the lady, he said, I know if they keep their cars that way, can you imagine how they're going to keep my rental property? That's why he didn't rent it to them. And so sometimes we miss out on opportunities. Our clutter causes us to miss out on major opportunities that the Lord, and major doors that the Lord want to open up because we just simply don't clean up. Um, the fourth reason, the fourth benefit to getting organized this morning is you can be more creative. I'm just going to go on and put it on out there for you. When you, you cannot be creative in an environment where there's clothes all over the floor. Um, you got junk scattered. You got dirty dishes in the sink. Um, the dishwasher is full. Um, you got dirty. The floors haven't been mopped. They have You cannot be creative in a space like that. Clutter and junk affects your mind. It affects, it affects the way that you think. It affects your mental health. It, it, it affects your emotional health. So in order for us to be creative, we have to have an orderly space where it's clean because a clean space allows us to relax. It allows us to be more focused and productive. When your area is clean, your brain doesn't have to work so hard. Your mind is sharp. Your concentration is focused. And the order around you feels good on the inside. On the contrary, when your surroundings display uncleanliness and disorganization, your thoughts will focus more on the chaos around you than on the creative ideas that you want to begin to develop. Clutter truly is an inside job affecting your mental health, and your ability to be able to be creative. It ruins your concentration and it draws your attention away from what's important. It's a constant should be doing thought hanging over your head. Keeping your environment clean and tidy will help you welcome that tranquility. Tranquility produces creativity. Where there's junk and where there's disorganization, you're not going to you're you're not going to be able to be creative. The Bible tells us that if we're faithful, if we're faithful over the little things that God has made us rulers over, then he'll be able to bless us with more. And a lot of times we begin to ask God, why are you not blessing us with the things that we want to be blessed with? We're living in this apartment right now and God, you know we want a house. Why you won't bless us with a house? And God is simply saying, I cannot bless you to get out the apartment because you want that Kool-Aid stain that's been down there in the rug the whole while you've been there that you've been walking over instead of getting some carpet cleaner and getting it up. If, if you can't be faithful to get the Kool-Aid stain out of the carpet, then God is not going to be faithful to give you a house to keep nasty. If you cannot be faithful to wash the dishes and not leave them in the sink at night at the apartment, God is not getting ready to bless you with more. If you cannot be faithful to wash your loads of clothes, loads and loads of clothes are just piled up in the laundry room, just overflowing. But you want God to bless you with a house. God is saying, no, I can't bless you with a house 
when you don't even clean up the one where you at now. That rim, that black rim that been around in the bathroom tub for two weeks now that you just been taking showers over that black rim. I can't bless you with a house because you won't clean up the black rim around the tub. I can't bless you with a house because you won't wash the laundry that you got now. I can't bless you with a house because you leaving dirty dishes um, in the sink at night. I cannot bless you with a house because the toothpaste is still in the, in the sink where you don't spit the toothpaste out and ain't washed the sink out in two weeks. God cannot bless us. He wants us to be faithful over the little so he can give us more. But we got to be faithful over what we already have first. God is not going to bless you with a new car. And the one that you got now, you got so much dirt on the mat, you can throw some seeds in there and grow some corn. He's not going to bless you with a brand new car and you don't vacuum out the one you got now. He's not going to bless you with a new car when you don't wash the one you got now. We got to be found faithful over what God has already given us. And then he will begin to bless us with more. He'll begin to bless us with more. The fifth benefit this morning to getting organized and getting the clutter out of your house is your life will be less stress. Yes, clutter and filth and disorganization causes stress in your life. How often has the stress in your life been related to the messy environment or the disorganized space that some of us live in? Your mood is affected by your surroundings. According to the Center for Disease Control, 80% of our medical expenditures are stress-related. One of the most life-changing, therapeutic, peace-producing tasks that you can pursue is to create a clutter-free environment around you. Did you hear it say that the, the Center for Disease Control talks about how stress um, affects your mood? And many of y'all are wondering why, well, why my husband come home and he got an attitude because he tired of coming home to a dirty house. That's why he got an attitude. That's why he having mood swings because the house is disorganized. The house is not clean. The dish is still in the sink. The breakfast dish is still in the sink when y'all left for work. That's why he has an attitude. Stress, clutter affects, uh, it causes stress in your life. It affects your health when there's clutter. 90% of Americans say disorganization at home or work has a negative impact on their lives. 65% say that clutter affects their state of mind. 53% says that it reduces motivation. And 40% says that it leaves them feeling unhappy. It's peaceful when you know where things are. If you can find everything you need when you need it, imagine how less complicated your life would be. In fact, scientific studies have linked clutter and disorganization to depression and anxiety. Many of you are suffering from anxiety. Many of you are suffering from depression. And some of it is simply linked to you just getting up and getting you a can of Lysol and some bleach and some comic and some uh, furniture spray and some Windex, cleaning up your environment, throwing away junk that you don't need. Some of y'all got clothes in y'all closet from two, three years, talking about y'all waiting on the style to come back in. You know, them bell-bottom pants, they gonna come back in, so I'm just gonna keep them. No, get rid of the stuff. If you have stuff in your closet that you have not worn within a year's time, you need to be giving it to the Goodwill or having a yard sale. You gotta get rid of it because... Um, scientific studies once again has shown us that clutter and disorganization lead to depression and anxiety and it leads to depression because and anxiety because every time you walk through the door of your home and your house is junky stuff is all over the place you're, you're going to have an anxiety attack because it's overwhelming to your mind because you don't know where to begin to start cleaning up. You, you don't know where to begin because stuff is all over the place. 
And so now it causes a sense of depression in your life because you want to get it clean up, but you don't know how to get it clean up. And so now it's overwhelming to your mind. And so now, not only now are you having anxiety attacks, but you're having depression as well because the clutter is weighing on your emotional state. We got to understand messy rooms, misplacing items, being late and missing appointments are all huge contributors to anxiety and stress that stem from being disorganized. Organizing experts have even reported their clients have lost weight, ended toxic relationships, left unhealthy jobs, and stopped bad habits once they decluttered their life. Once they decluttered their lives. Clearing your space clears up your mind. Clearing your space, cleaning up your house clears up your mind. It declutters your mind. When people walk into my home, um, Leanne, Leanne is watching right now. When people walk into my home, the first thing they always tell me is, it is so peaceful in your home. No matter who comes here, that's the, when they walk through that door, and they sit down for about five, 10 minutes. The first thing they say is, it is so peaceful in your home. And it is peaceful here, not just because the spirit of the Lord resides here and because I pray in here. It's peaceful because when you walk in, my house is clean. And it's always clean because I have decluttered it. Everything has a place. When we use it, we put it back. When we, when we need it, we know where it is because it has a place. And it, and it gives a sense of peace in your home when everything is in place, when everything is decluttered and it's clean, it gives you a sense of peace. The next benefit, and this is number six, and I'm going to give you 10 this morning and then we're going to get off. Um, the sixth benefit to um, or getting organized is that you're going to be able to sleep better. And how many of us at night, um, we, we're, we, we, we're taking sleep medication. We're taking sleep pills and stuff to help us to go to sleep at night. We spend one third of our lives in the bedroom, which is more time spent than any other room in our home. This room is designed for rest. It's uh, designed for relaxation and sleep. Studies show that people with clutter in their bedrooms experience more sleep disturbances. There's nothing more irritating and distracting than focusing your eyes on the overwhelming disorder in your bedroom. As the last thing that you're going to begin to see when you turn the lights on at night, you're going to see all those clothes in the middle of the floor. You're going to see all, those, all that junk you got on the nightstands. And what it's going to do is it's going to weigh on you consciously and it's going to interfere with your sleep patterns at night. Physical clutter in your surroundings overload your senses, preventing you from experiencing the best rest. There's nothing more peaceful than climbing into the bed with clean sheets, warm blankets, and a bedroom where the carpet is, is vacuumed, clothes is not on the floor, the nightstand is cleared off. Your mind will rest and be at ease knowing that your home is as it should be when you begin to lay down and go to sleep at night. With a sleep-friendly environment, you'll improve the quality of your rest, which will improve the quality of your life. So do you understand how important it is today that your house be clean, that your house be organized? And the good Lord is giving you all time to get this done. That's why he put in my spirit to come over here this morning and teach this because you, you, many of us are not working. We're at home every day. Now we got the opportunity to take room by room, one room at a time so it won't be overwhelming. Take one room at a time, declutter it, get everything out, get it clean, organized, move on to the next room, move on to the next room, to the next space, to the next space, to the next space, move on out there to that garage, then move on and clean out the car, and then get everything organized and in place so God can begin to bless you because he's going to see that, hey, she's being faithful, he or she is being faithful in the little things, so now I'm going to be able to bless them with something else. The seventh 
benefit to getting organized this morning and to having a clean, organized home is that you'll have more time and energy to go after your dreams and your goals. When your home is dirty or disorganized, it is so difficult to focus on the bigger tasks you should be doing. When everything is organized, your bills are paid on time, your laundry is sorted and done, your meals are planned, and your papers are filed, um, you have extra time to work on goals and dreams that God has given you. When you're not always feeling um, the pressure of needing to get uh, that room cleaned up, you focus on your time and energy on bigger goals, not um, on, oh, oh, I got about five or six loads of clothes that I need to go and wash, so I ain't got time to write this book that the Lord told me to write. I ain't got time to start this ministry that the Lord told me to start because I got four or five loads of clothes I need to be washing up. All my floors are dirty. No, you got to keep it maintained. Once you get it, when you go from room to room and you clean it out and you declutter, you got to maintain it. You got to maintain it. And you got to make sure that everybody in the house, the husband, the children, whomever, you got to make sure that they know, hey, this I have cleaned up from room to room to room. You all are going to have to help me maintain this. You're going to have to help me maintain it so it'll be a level of peace in our home. And so God can begin to bless us with more. The eighth benefit this morning to getting um, organized and getting clutter out of your house is that you're going to be a great example for your family. You're going to be a great example for your family. Nine times out of ten, when men and women grow up with their moms and their dads, and they don't grow up in a clean environment, they don't grow up seeing their mom wash the dishes, they don't grow up seeing their dad um, clean up the yards. They don't grow up seeing the house being clean, the clothes being washed. Everything is out of order. It becomes a generational curse. It becomes a generational curse because what you see growing up in your home, that's, that's where you get, um, that's where you get your, 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 um, what you call it. Um, it becomes a generational curse because you haven't seen an example of a mother or a father that has kept an organized home, that has ran a home properly, kept the car clean, the yards clean. You haven't seen that in your life. So it becomes a generational, um, it becomes a generational curse for your family. Uh, we got to be great examples for our children and for our family because they're watching us. They're observing how we keep things and they're learning from us every single day, whether we know it or not. Our children are watching how we leave them dirty dishes in the sink at night. And we and, and it, to them, it, it becomes a way of life because they say, oh, this is where my mama kept her house. So this is where I'm going to keep my house. My mama didn't wash clothes but once a month. But it took her two, three days to wash them. But you know what? That, that's how I'm going to wash my clothes. My mama didn't clean out our car, so I'm not going to clean, out, clean out, out my car. When I lived with my mom and my daddy, that black rim stayed around the tub for a whole month. So that's how I'm going to leave my house. No, our children, our families, our, they're watching and they're observing us every single day. But what are we exhibiting to them? Are we showing them how to have a clutter-free and organized life? Are, are we imparting it to them and letting them know that when everything is organized, that it reduces our stress, it reduces anxiety, and the chaos that's in our life is totally uh, reduced when there's order that's in our homes. In addition to um, an excellent example we're setting, it improves the overall health of you and your family when your house is clean, sanitized, and everything is in order. It's not good for anybody to live in clutter and filth, but especially it's not good for small children. As babies crawl around on the dirty floor, they can come susceptible to germs and bacteria that's going to affect their health. As you keep your home sanitized and clean, your entire family will be healthy. But we got to get to a place to where we are keeping things organized. We are keeping them clean. We're, we're doing something in our homes every single day to maintain a healthy environment that is clean, that is sanitized, that is organized. So God can be pleased with us being faithful of what he has given us and then he can give us more. The ninth benefit to keeping your house clean and organized and decluttered uh, is that you'll begin to build better relationships. Um, in a survey conducted by the NAPO, uh, people were asked, how long would it take you to get your house ready for dinner, guests? 65% said four hours or less. 
11% said they would never invite anybody on the inside of their home. 10% said eight hours. 7% said 24 hours. And 6% said 40 or more hours. It is so embarrassing, y'all, to have unexpected guests show up at your house and everything in your house is messy and disorganized. And you can say whatever you want to say, ladies. And I know that we live in a day and a time where um, our husbands can help us with the housework, you know, and some husbands do. But we can say as ladies, whatever we want to say, but when people come to your house and there's disorder, there's filth, stuff is all over the place, they're not going to leave your house and say, oh, did you, Brother Joe ought to be shame of himself. No, they're going to leave your house and say, Sister Sally ought to be shame of herself the way she keep her house. They're gonna, it's going to reflect on the woman. It's going to reflect on the woman, how the house is looking. So we got to begin to clean up. We got to begin to clean up. We, when we desire to have people over, but because the level of clutter is so overwhelming to us, we can't even get our thoughts together to even begin to clean the entire house because there's so much stuff that's out of order and out of place. Your home does not have to be um, in a museum-like form to, to be presentable. It doesn't have to look like a showcase to be presentable. But it does need to be clutter-free. It does need to be managed well. And then you don't have to worry about people popping up and then you running all over the place trying to throw them dirty dishes uh, in the in the oven because you don't want to see people with the, you don't want the people to see the dirty dishes in your sink. You got socks all everywhere. The children don't come in and throw shoes all everywhere. You just got books all over the table. Everything is just everywhere, all over the place. No, we got to get cleaned up. The tenth and the last benefit this morning to getting order not organized and decluttering your home is that you're going to have more confidence. You're going to have more confidence. Um, UCLA Center on Everyday Lives and Families explored the relationships of 32 families and the thousands of objects in their homes to conclude that clutter has a strong effect on moods and your overall self-esteem. Women especially feel embarrassed, ashamed, and guilty with the presence of clutter in their homes, especially when people come to visit. Uh, we're just going to simply feel better about ourselves when things are in order. It builds up our confidence. It builds up our self-esteem. Everything flows from the home. You may not have control over every situation in your life, but you do have control over the condition of your home this morning. You do have control over your spaces in your home this morning. When you organize your home to your own personal standard, um, you will feel more competent. You're going to feel more in control. You're going to feel more empowered. Getting your house in shape will improve your self-esteem and your self-image. You develop confidence in your castle, in your home. Um, your home truly becomes your haven of peace. And as you can see, just the little um, inconveniences of cleaning are worth it. And in the long run, it's, in the long run, it's going to produce a healthy um, family. It's going to not only produce you having a healthy family because it's clean and sanitized, but it's also going to begin to break generational curses off of your life, off of your children's life. So you, you won't be raising up children and grandchildren that say, well, oh, well, my mama didn't clean up, so I ain't going to clean up. My mama didn't wash clothes every day, so I ain't, I'm not going to wash no clothes. I'm just going to let them stack up. No, we got to break that generational curse right now of filth. We got to break that generational curse, and we got to begin to create a calm, functional spaces in our house that make us feel more energized and more relaxed. And I know this morning that, this is probably a, a teaching that most people that you probably not going to hear in a church setting. Um, this is a teaching that people probably just flat out just scared to really teach because they don't want to tell people how being how a bunch of junk in their house and being filthy, uh, how it affects their health. It affects their mood. It affects their stress level. It causes anxiety in their life. So on this morning, just begin to clean up and clean out so you can become a better you. So you can become a better you. And for many of you, you may be saying, well, Dr. Johnson, 
the, the clutter in my home is overwhelming. You just don't understand. I don't even know where to start. Let me suggest to you, um, start in one room. Just start in one room. Go in your in, in the living room. Start in your living room and get you a garbage bag and go to a store like the Dollar General or wherever and get you a box. And the stuff that you're going to resell or either give, donate to the Goodwill, put it um, put it in, um, in that box. The stuff that you know that you're going to resell or that you're going to that you're going to resell or have a garage sale or a yard sale or whatever. The clutter that you know you're not going to use, put it in the garbage bag. Put it in the garbage bag. Get that one room decluttered. Stuff that you know that you're not using that you got in the living room, throw it in the garbage bag. Stuff that you can resell, put it in the box. Put it in the box and make sure that you have that yard sale and get rid of it. And then move on to the next space. Move on to the next space. Move on to the kitchen. You know that junk drawer that you got in the kitchen where you got the flashlight, you got the matches, you got paint brushes, you got receipts from 2003, that cluttered drawer. Get clean the stuff out. Clean it out. All of the drawers in the kitchen. Organize it. Get it to a place to where you know that you can begin um, to find things. Uh, this morning, I'm going to give you an example mm -hmm. in my kitchen here. I'm going to give you an example of of what it's supposed to be um, looking like. I'm going to give you an example this morning. You can find stuff. It's not all over the place. You can find it. This right here relieves stress when you can find stuff and everything is in place. Everything is in place. My, my kitchen draws are not junked all up. If you can see, if you all can see from where I'm showing you, everything in my drawers have a place. It's not, it's not junky. That I have stuff in here to, to help me keep my drawers and stuff organized. I'm not just teaching you this and not living it. You can see right here, you know, we got to keep stuff organized. Get whatever you need. Get whatever you need. And I'm showing you the, the level of organization here that we need the level of organization it helps with your mind it helps with your stress level i'm not just teaching you this and my house is junky my house is a haven of peace when my husband comes home he, he doesn't come home um to a junky space or to a junky place he, he's coming home to a haven of peace and so on this morning i just want to give you all i just want to give you all the tools that you need Get your house organized. Be faithful over the little things that God has given you. Be faithful over that apartment. Then God can bless you with the house. Be faithful over whatever kind of car you drive. So God can bless you um, with another car. Be faithful over everything that God has given. Declutter it. Clean it up. Sanitize it. Keep it clean. Keep it presentable. And God will begin to bless you with more. I thank each of you for um, joining me on my Sparkle business page this morning. And I'm going to be coming back on with more teachings, teaching you little bit by little bit how to organize your home, how to get things clean. And if you need my services, um, you can go. I have a flyer there on my Sparkle page with my telephone number, my business pet number on there, how you can contact me. And like I said, this is what I do. This is what I specialize in. I help people clear the clutter out of their homes. I help them get organized and not just get organized in their homes, but in their minds as well. Because once again, everything that you see in your home, it flows from your spirit. This is Dr. Corrine Johnson. Thank you all so much um, for joining me this morning for this segment of 10 ways to declutter your home, 10 ways to declutter your environment. And I thank you all for joining me this morning. And I pray that you all will join me on next week um, with another teaching on teaching us how important it is to keep our homes clean, orderly, decluttered, and in place. Because if we're faithful, once again, over the few, God will in turn begin to bless us with more. This is Dr. Corrine Johnson. You all have a great day.